<laughs> hey, what's going on, guys? It's Sam here from the TNR channel. And today, as Declan would have mentioned in yesterday's Captain America Civil War review, I am indeed going to be doing the Batman vs Superman review today. And then, um, yeah, without any further ado, I don't think there's the only thing I've got to mention, guys, is um, in the next couple of days slash weeks, maybe. There is going to be a big video for this channel. This channel's first big video. It's going to be Batman vs Superman vs Civil War. And considering Declan Fred Civil War, he's going to be taking the Civil War side. Considering I prefer Batman vs Superman, I'm going to be taking Batman vs Superman side. So um, yeah, that's the only thing I can really think of. If you haven't watched Declan Civil War review, I will leave a link to it in the description. And um, yeah, let's just get on to the review. So the first thing I want to talk about is Doomsday. He was the worst part of this film. I'm not even kidding you guys. He was awful, okay? There was nothing that they could have done about him now that could make him good for me. He was just terrible. He was rushed. He looked bad. He wasn't fully explained on how he was made. It basically just looked like Lex Luthor cut himself, got a slice of Zod skin, threw him in a pool, and he made a monster. No, Doomsday was not explained well. He just, he just, his backstory was just not explained and how he was made. He just, there was just nothing about Doomsday that was good. He looked terrible and he was rushed at the end. So Doomsday is a big no-no for me. Now, the actors. Okay. I'm just going to mainly focus on the three main actors, which is, of course, Batman, Superman and Wonder Woman. Okay, now, Batfleck was amazing okay Batfleck was the best part of this film Batfleck made this film 10 times better in my opinion than it already was and I just love Batfleck in this film he was incredible absolutely incredible he was just great and there's no two ways about it guys he was just amazing so um yeah guys that's basically um that's basically Batman for you in this film um, so next you have Henry Cavill as Superman. You know he's meh. You know he's good. You know he's basically just Man of Steel. He, he's good. You know he's fine. Um, so yeah, nothing special about Superman. He's my favorite Superman, but considering there hasn't been many good on-screen Supermans, it's not very hard to find one. Um, next you got Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman. She was like a like Superman. She was fine. She was, no, I'd say she's a bit more than fine. She was good. She was a good Wonder Woman. She was she was quite an interesting part of the film, but all in all, Batfleck was my favorite actor in this movie and probably one of my main aspects. One of the best Batman adaptations I've seen, beside Kevin Conroy as the voice and Christian Bale in the Dark Knight trilogy. Next, we've got the outfits. Now, the three main outfits consist of Wonder Woman, Superman, and Batman. Now, Superman, I'm going to start with Superman because he was um, his outfit sort of changed from the Man of Steel. But, you know, there was no big difference. He he, he kind of looked the same as the Man of Steel. I mean, they added a few extra features, like giving him, like, red boots. But, you know, nothing really new there with Superman. Next, you have Batfleck. Now, Batfleck, in my opinion, guys, the Batfleck outfit was the best outfit, the best Batman outfit I have seen Batman ever wear in the comics in the films, just anything, in the TV shows. I don't even know what to say, guys. The Batfleck outfit was amazing. They really nailed it. They really give him a sort of Dark Knight Return sort of look. I've seen with the battle armour as well that he wears in the Dark Knight Returns. The battle armour he wears during the Superman fight sequence is amazing. They basically made his suit like the Dark Knight Returns, and guys, they absolutely nailed it. I love the Batfleck outfit, and I just love Batfleck in general. There was no sin I could have given about Batfleck at all. I loved him, and he was the best part of the film, in my opinion. Next, we got Wonder Woman's outfit. Now, they tried to stay as close to the comics as they can while trying to make it look like a badass at the same time, and they did both. Wonder Woman's outfit was incredible. And yeah, Wonder Woman's outfit just was incredible. It wasn't, it wasn't quite Batfleck, but it was incredible. Okay, next. Next, we've got Jesse Eisenberg as Lex Luthor. Notice how I didn't put him under the actor's scale, as he was on a completely different scale. Jesse Eisenberg was horrific. He was, he was cringy to watch. He was made out, no, he just wasn't a good choice on DC's half. 
they did not make a good choice by putting him there. So, yeah, Jesse Eisenberg, just not great. Like I said to Declan, who was also on this channel, I said, he's sort of made out Lex Luthor, as we see in the comics and the previous Superman films. Super, um, Lex Luthor's made out to be a dominant leader. He will do anything and kill anybody to rise to power and get the money, everything he needs. He will do anything to rise to the top. But Lex Luthor in Batman vs Superman just doesn't care about any of that. He just does everything as a joke. Sounds like somebody I know. Oh wait, yeah, they tried to make another joke out of Jesse Eisenberg. And they did, but it wasn't a very good one. Because if he would have been cast as the Joker, he would have been fine. And Mark saying he would have been a good Joker, but he would have been fine. But this is Lex Luthor. For all of you die or DC comic fans out there like myself, this was not the Lex Luthor we were ever used to seeing in anything before. So, um, yeah, Jesse Eisenberg just, you know. Okay, next we have the story. Now, people thought the story was bad, lumpy, just sloppy in general. People thought the film was. I thought the film was really well timed. They, um, Zack Snyder did a really good choice with making. Bruce Wayne's origin story, short and snappy, and doing it in the opening credit scenes. I thought they did that great. I mean, they might be, they might expand on that in um, the Batfleck solo film, or they might not. But um, yeah, they. I think the film was really well timed. It's shown how Superman had gone on since the Man of Steel. It's shown how the Man of Steel happened. We're not taking too long, right? I calculated it. It took ten minutes for them to go over all the previous events and the new origin story for new Batfleck Bruce Wayne and it didn't take it took 10 minutes and Zack Snyder made a brilliant choice there as they didn't waste too much time you know getting along with uh, introducing new characters they just got straight into the action which I absolutely loved so yeah guys that was my review for Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice if you did enjoy um I would leave a like maybe and if you really enjoyed subscribe it would really help us out um, so yeah thank you for watching the Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice review and I hope you will join us for our next video whatever it may be so thank you for watching and I will speak to you next time guys